I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Colin Pape, founder and CEO of Presearch. Colin, welcome back to the show, and thank you for taking the time today. Thanks for having me, Ashton. Appreciate it. You're very welcome. Let's dive into the world of search engines, incorporating decentralization, blockchain, uh, transparency, honesty, all of those things that we want in, in searching throughout the crazy internet that we live in. Um, and Presearch has built some amazing initiatives towards making the world a better place through search engines. Um, and I'd love for you to kick off our conversation. Uh, for those who didn't see our first interview, you know, just an overview of some of the solutions that you and your team have built at Presearch, and then we'll dive into the latest updates. Awesome. Yeah, I appreciate it. So, so yeah, the, the vision for Presearch is uh, a decentralized search engine driven by the community, kind of by the people, for the people. And, uh, you know, utilizing open source technology and enabling the community to play an active role in both uh, the, the information uh, that is, uh, is accessed through the search engine, as well as kind of the economic value of uh, that, that search opportunity, which is, is quite massive when you look at Google and the $100 billion a year in revenue that they bring in through their kind of simple uh, ad platform. Uh, there really is a lot of economic value, and so just looking at how we can, uh, you know, funnel that back into uh, kind of the, this alternative economy, a, a, a parallel kind of economy that uh, ultimately I think uh, many of us in the crypto space are trying to build. And uh, and yeah, it's it's been going really well. Uh, really grateful for the community support. Really excited about the. Uh, people that have kind of, uh, uh, you know, joined pre-search and, uh, and become active within the, the community and within the ranks. Mm -hmm. And uh, we've got a yeah, pretty significant development that we just uh, shipped out last week. And, uh, and yeah, just uh, pushing forward on the uh, decentralization front. Amazing, Colin. And yeah, um, you know, with search engines being like the landing page of the internet, you know, we start here. Uh, it's important for people to start off on the on the correct foot, right? And I feel like um, now more and more as people are waking up um, on, on, on the truth of the internet and realizing that we need to be the ones in control and not having the search engines monetizing our data and using us as numbers, uh, more people are looking for like the proper search engine that's willing to respect the people that are actually using it. And I feel like pre-search falls right into that category of, you know, utilizing the ethos of, of blockchain and decentralization and um, giving the people what they need without taking from them. Yeah, it's it's really uh, the the vision I think for the, for the project, and I mean I have been around the internet for for quite a while, and I really remember the early days and and kind of how people were excited that this was kind of a, a new space and uh, the ability for uh, us all to communicate directly and freely and and to have all these different you know properties and different kind of channels that you could access really without interference and then at, at some point along the way you know we, we ended up kind of back into this walled garden uh scenario uh where it's you know big tech there's there's you know a handful of players that have all the network effects and uh they've ended up uh steering us in a direction that is i think kind of counter to the the ethos of the early internet and uh, they do seem to be all about extracting as much value as possible from the users and, uh, and controlling, you know, what information they see. And uh, in some cases, supporting uh, different, you know, biases or agendas that uh, maybe the, the users aren't aware of or, or wouldn't support if they were aware of them. And, uh, and yeah, so if we can uh, come up with a, a way uh, to, to put that power back into the hands of uh, the, the people who are uh, utilizing the, the platform and enable them to kind of, you know, look under the hood and, and participate in that, that process and in the governance. Uh, we, we think that, yeah, this is uh, more of kind of the, the public utility that uh, the, the internet needs and deserves rather than having, you know, a, a single company have 92% market share, but really have kind of, you know, totally different interests than the actual users. Uh, so, so, yeah, it's one of those things It feels like it's a, a really important uh, undertaking and uh, need to ensure that, that we live up to uh, that potential. Definitely, Colin, and it's a huge undertaking, um, but it looks like your team has been making great strides 
and I saw in, in the most recent update about this mainnet launch and like a huge announcement from Presearch. It looks like you're taking a big, huge next step uh, in growing the platform. And I'd love to hear more on that mainnet launch, how that went and, and what that means for the future of searching on the internet. Yeah, so it's it's been uh, just amazing really to see the community's uh, support. We launched uh, at, at Testnet uh, towards uh, the end of uh, 2020. And uh, it, it basically enables people to install software on a computer or on a, a server. There's a lot of people that are using these like uh, virtual servers uh, that, that you can get in kind of data centers around the world. And uh, as they run this software, it enables them to connect to the, the pre-search network and basically make available to the network the uh, processing or the, the storage or, or the bandwidth that that uh, individual computer has. And uh, in return, we have the ability to basically allocate tasks to it and uh, then to reward the people who are operating those those nodes and that software uh, with pre-search cryptocurrency, the pre-token. And so we, we've kind of gone from, you know, having a, a lot of the infrastructure, uh, you know, running in more of a traditional data center environment. And, and if you look at like, you know, regular search engines, they have these massive data centers. They have extreme control really over all aspects of uh, uh, the information and uh, that, that whole kind of, uh, you know, technical uh, process. And, and in this case, uh, rather than than you know kind of create that big you know geographic footprint somewhere and and kind of have all these significant ties to the legacy financial system the legacy uh, you know technology systems uh, we now have access to uh, there's there's over sixty five thousand user nodes uh, that people have contributed to the network yeah it's really uh, quite quite impressive uh, what the community has uh, has done. And uh, so that now provides us with kind of this foundation where we're currently using the nodes largely to, uh, you know, kind of access information from multiple sources that exist out on the internet, different search engines, databases, APIs. But now that we have that infrastructure in place, it's enabling us to start uh, taking the next step. So running decentralized crawlers, doing indexing, searching indexes, and, and really kind of all the different uh, technical needs uh, of you know building out an independent open source search engine that now has that infrastructure to, to run on that really has almost no ties to kind of the legacy financial uh, system and the legacy technical system. We're basically, you know, uh, rewarding people in, in cryptocurrency and uh, they have the ability just to install this, uh, you know, node software and uh, uh, spin up servers and, and start powering the network. And so, yeah, it's kind of that, that foundational infrastructure that the project needs for all the next steps uh, that it, it, it's building. And we, we've been really fortunate. We've got a great CTO, Trey Granger, uh, very involved in the open source search, uh, you know, community and, and movement. And uh, he's kind of had this vision for, for how this could be done. And in, in a way where, you know, it, it's very usable and uh it's it's you know very comparable to uh regular search experience it's just you know more private and uh uh, you know, there are a, a couple of, you know, minor trade-offs uh, for some there, there had been speed in the past. Now that we have this new decentralized network, uh, people are able to connect to local nodes. So it's actually sped up considerably for people that are, are global users versus North American. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, we, we've got uh, a pretty exciting path ahead and, and this was definitely a really big step and the community has uh, really come together in a, in a huge way to power this platform. Wow, that's incredible to hear, Colin. And yeah, I don't think a lot of people realize uh, when Amazon or Google has just like a warehouse full of all of their servers, that's really a single point of failure as well. You know, they're controlling the internet through this one giant building. And if something happens there, um, you know, they're the ones in control. But to have over 65,000 user nodes in the announcement, you know, from the launch just came in the past week or so, to already have that many people having it decentralized and be able to um, be a part of the next biggest, uh, you know, wave of Web3 and like the future of search engines for everyone to become a part of it, um, ha have a say and be rewarded for it as well. I feel like is just a complete revolution. 
Yeah, it, it, it really is a whole different paradigm for, for search. And uh, it is, you know, the, the, the beauty of search is that it's something that people do so frequently. It is possible to build a habit uh, around uh, a different search engine. Uh, there, there's a lot of, you know, really interesting kind of Web3 projects, but like you, you might do them so infrequently that it's tough to actually build a habit and switch over to it. And so people just end up falling into kind of the traditional uh, big tech uh, framework but with search you know people do it multiple times a day we have the ability uh, for you either to install a, a you know private browser private uh, search experience on your mobile device there are browser extensions uh, and you, you can kind of switch it and then start using it and we, we've got people that have been using it since 2018 and uh, it's their primary search engine I mean I can tell you myself I, I don't use Google anymore I don't uh, you know need to uh, really support big tech in that way i i use pre-search and then i use multiple search engines within that uh in, environment as far as you know kind of niche search engines uh sometimes i might be you know doing uh ether scan lookups and that's kind of a search experience or i may be uh you know searching our our crm system uh customer relationship management system for like my other business and uh it's just kind of a an easy you know way to uh, really uh, direct your query and get uh, quick results, uh, but uh, but yeah, overall it's uh, it's pretty neat just to see how people have uh, have come together behind this and uh, been able to you know shift to over a, a million uh, you know users a month that are using the platform, uh, three point eight million registered users, and uh, and yeah, just kind of seeing the ecosystem continue to grow. It's really exciting. That's very exciting, and it's great to hear that a lot of the percentage of the users that ha have used it ever are, are active users. I think like having retention, I know it's something that sticks is uh, a huge green check for the project. And, and you mentioned about hosting the nodes and helping being a part of it, be also able to earn pre-search tokens. But I see that, you know, without hosting the nodes and getting into the architecture, just using the search engine, it looks like you're also able to earn uh, pre-search tokens and sort of be rewarded and and make an income from just doing what you would have done anyway. Yeah, and that's definitely been a, a, a key driver of of the growth and and you know of that stickiness. It's something where people feel like, oh yeah, I've got a a, a reason to to do it. Uh, I'm being valued here, and uh, they're collecting those uh, those pre-search tokens that over time uh, do add up. And uh, so, so yeah, there's the rewards uh, for that. There's rewards for referring people into the network. Everybody basically has a, a link that they can share. And if they do and people join through them, then they, they earn pre-search tokens as well. So it, it is just trying to kind of decentralize that, that value uh, ecosystem. Uh, you know, right now, if, if you think about it, I mean, there's just like hundreds of billions of dollars that are all funneling into Mountain View, California. And it's, it's you know, very centralized. And then it's kind of going from there to a few key points. They've got, you know, I think 23 or so data centers that are around the world. And uh, then they've got a, a few different, you know, offices uh, regionally. Uh, but largely, you know, it's all kind of like coming in here. And then uh, in, and in this case, it's, it's very much, you know, distributed. We've got, uh, there, there's a, uh, a link that I'll, I'll post in uh, the comments, uh, but it shows like where the the main net nodes are located. You can see them like by country, and it's uh, it's it's pretty neat just to see that they are are all over the place and in places that you wouldn't think. There's you know people running nodes. There are, and uh, it is just more of that kind of direct uh, value transfer that, uh, that is possible with cryptocurrency. So yeah, it's, it's, it's neat to think that we'll be able to build this, uh, to a, a much, uh, greater scale, uh, but, but, you know, do it in a way where, you know, like the organization itself is, is quite small. And, and ultimately we are looking to, uh, just, you know, empower community members to continue making pre-search better and better, and uh, helping to grow the network. I mean, it really, it's kind of like the Bitcoin of, of search is, is kind of how we're thinking of it. Mm -hmm. Incredible, Colin. And although the numbers are amazing that you, you know, you've spoken about since just the mainnet launch um, for the next stage of pre-search in, in the past weeks here, um, you guys have been working on this for more than a few years, but I feel like we're still so early and we're still just like at the 0.1% of what will be the Web3 and moving everybody into the Web3. Um, what are 
you and your team's plans on you know having pre-search become I know the default way that people search you know when people first get a computer and it just opens up to the browser they just use whatever's there you know for, for the most part with the majority of of um, regular users how do you get to that point where you know pre-search and searches that actually respect your privacy and, and reward you for your contributions become the default search yeah it is it's a really big opportunity i mean the the overall uh, search space is massive and it's super centralized right now google has more than 92 percent market share uh, you know, DuckDuckGo has kind of come up uh, over the past few years. They, they seem to actually be a little bit on the uh, the, the downtrend after some of their uh, recent uh, you know revelations that they're maybe not so aligned with their users. And so we, we've been picking up a lot of uh, ex DuckDuckGoers, which is is great. Uh, but but overall, you know, we, we've kind of got a path where we can uh, appeal to those people that, that, you know, share values and that are interested in crypto and that are, are more kind of power users who are looking to actively customize. And uh, that alone is a big opportunity. And then over time, uh, basically looking at uh, all these different opportunities where you can uh, get installed as, uh, you know, a default search engine or, or do some type of a, a distribution uh, agreement or partnership with any of the up and coming uh, services. So there's, you know, all new Web3 apps and there's ways that people are now accessing search in the web through uh, different wallets. And so uh, we're, we're working on getting included in those. And uh, then on kind of the legacy side, we, we actually kind of threw like a weird, you know, in, in the EU, there was was like a, a, a legal ruling, basically, where they forced Google, rather than to set itself as the default, every time somebody uh, installed Chrome or, or Android, uh, that they would be faced with a search choice screen where they would have to actually actively choose their search engine. And uh, so we ended up uh, applying into that and got included. And so now for uh, all the EU uh, Android and Chrome users, uh, pre-search is one of the default options that they can easily select just as easily as they could choose Google. So I've been picking up a lot of users who, you know, maybe are curious about private search or blockchain, but don't know pre-search per se. And, uh, you know, we'll, we'll definitely continue to uh, pursue those opportunities as well. Hmm. Sounds great, Colin. That sounds like you're making great strides as a default search engine. Uh, great to hear um, that, you know, blockchain's being put on the map and people understand decentralization more and more for the everyday users of the internet and not just the power users. And I feel like the tides are just going to continue to turn and I'm sure you know pre-search's growth should coincide with that as well. Um, for the viewers that are, you know, if they're just looking to utilize the search and, and try it out, uh, what's the best way? And also to learn more about, you know, becoming an active uh, node participant and, and earning pre-search tokens. Yeah, so we, we just switched actually uh, to presearch.com that uh, is, is the new uh, domain for the project. And in this case, we're, we're you know, thinking of .com as representing the community, .community. Uh, so go to presearch.com. You can uh, register for an account using the link in the top right corner. Uh, or there are kind of some, some other options if you hover over that top right uh, menu that will enable you to explore the advertising platform, which uses something called keyword staking. Or if you want to join in the this uh, decentralized infrastructure movement and, and run a pre-search node, you can go into uh, nodes and, uh, uh, you know, on general social media is, is kind of a great place to uh, subscribe for updates. You can go to twitter.com slash pre-search news uh, or telegram t.me slash pre-search and then discord if, if you're there is uh, discord.presearch.com. Mm. <clears throat> great. I will leave those links in the description box below as well, Colin. And thank you so much for taking the time to come on and explain all this. All the best with you know search engine results, bringing more people into the future of of web search. Um, you know, I believe that you guys are making good strides, and I'm going to continue to use PreSearch. I am an active user of it as well, and it is my go-to search engine. So thank you for creating it, uh, and congratulations on all the success of the mainnet launch so far and growing nodes throughout the world. And I'm looking forward to seeing how that continues to grow out and let's follow up in the near future. Awesome, sounds good, thanks. I really appreciate it, Ashton, thank you.